All right, good come. We're going to set up uh, the system and the system of linear equations and then use the LU decomposition method to solve this problem. Uh, so we're going to go through those steps outlined in the lecture notes. <laughs> so uh, set this up. For me, I, I like to keep them uh, kind of like in order uh, so that way I can kind of see and to keep track of the different pieces as I move down uh, the paper. Um, it helps me to kind of keep, just keep track of everything and make sense of the whole process. So set up, uh, we're going to set up the matrix A, which is the coefficient matrix, the matrix zero or O, I guess you could call it that. Um, that will eventually become our L matrix and then our uh, identity matrix I, which will um, become our P matrix, our permutation matrix later on. Okay, so the coefficients come from these, this system here. And so I have A is equal to uh, 2, 1, negative 1. And then uh, the second row is 2, 1, negative 2. And then the third one is 4, 3, 2. Okay, so there's my coefficient matrix. The O matrix is literally just a 3 by 3 matrix of O's or zeros. And these are going to track the multipliers that we use as we use Gaussian elimination to make this upular triangular. The A is going to turn into our U matrix uh, in this system. And uh, our identity matrix is literally just the matrix with ones along the diagonal. Okay, all right. So now that we have our matrixes set up, uh, our first row in Gaussian elimination, focusing on the coefficient matrix, is to remove the, the value of the of the number uh, two and the second row one, or row two, so two, one position. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna multiply uh, row one by a negative one, and I'm gonna add it to row two, because that will, a negative here added to this will make, it will zero out this component, okay? And so if I do that, um, row one is not gonna change, so it'll be the same. And likewise, uh, row four is not going to change. So I'm just going to write those in there. And then two times, uh, or sorry, a negative one times row one uh, makes that a negative two. And adding that to two makes that a zero. A negative one times one, uh, and then adding that to one makes that a zero. And then a negative one here to a negative one makes that a positive one. Adding a positive one to a negative two makes that a negative one. Okay, and so this is our A. Um, so for our row, since this is the term that zeroed out our O matrix, this term, we don't multiply it by a negative one. And so in, when we input it into the O form, it's like a, when you solve for X, like negative X uh, plus two, right? It's the opposite of positive two as a solution, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing here. And so um, if I put this in, this is gonna be a row of zeros here. This is the term that came zero, and we did that by making it a negative one. So the opposite of negative one is a positive one in that location. And so we have that there. And then the identity matrix actually didn't change at all for this for this step. Okay. So this is kind of like our first, our first round. Okay, so now I need to eliminate this term here. So to do that, I'm gonna multiply row two, or row one, sorry, by a negative two times row one and add it to row three, okay? So you'll notice that each of these steps, the O matrix records the opposite of the corresponding multiplier that we're adding in. Uh, so row one is not gonna change at all. Uh, row two is not gonna change. And now row three. Uh, row three, negative two times negative two makes that a negative four. And adding it to a positive four makes that zero. Negative two times one makes that a negative two. Adding to three makes that a positive one. And negative two times a negative one makes that a positive two. Two plus two will make that a positive four. Okay. Now, if we consider the, how is that transforming in our, our O matrix? The first and second rows aren't gonna change at all. But you notice that we multiplied by a negative two to make this element zero in the third row. So that means that the corresponding element here is going to change from uh, by two, since we take the opposite of the values, and so that becomes just a positive two there. And our identity matrix didn't change at all in this problem, or for this problem so far, okay? So our i is still the same. All right. 
continuing on then with our, with our system here, okay? Uh, you'll notice that uh, I want a pivot at each of the diagonal entries. And so now I notice here that I have a zero element in the in the diagonal on this one, but row three has a one here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna interchange these two rows to create that diagonal element. Okay, so row two is gonna go to row three. And so I need to keep track of that in every element along or in each of the matrices that we have here. So to switching row two to row one in matrix uh, A, we're going to get two, zero, and eight, one. That one doesn't change, but row three now becomes row two. So that's going to be zero, one, and four. And then row two now goes to row three. So that's going to become zero, zero, and eight, one. Okay, so this is our new resulting matrix. And you'll notice that it's in upper triangular form. In other words, we have zeros along uh, below the diagonal. So this is the diagonal. Everything below that is a zero. Okay. So that's really good news. Uh, interchanging the um, first row doesn't change. The row two and row one switch here. So I get two, one, zero. Oops, sorry, that should be a zero there. And then a zero, uh, sorry, that should be a one, zero, zero. Same with that. Uh, row two and row three switching. So these switch positions. Okay. And I need to keep track of that in my uh, identity matrix. Now it becomes my P matrix. So row uh, one. And row, sorry, row three and row two switch. And so those two correspondingly switched. Okay. All right. So now, uh, just one more step. Um, I notice again that this is upper triangular. So this is going to become our, our U matrix. So this is U, which is what we were looking for. And then this matrix uh, is almost our, our, lower diagonal matrix, but remember we need to include ones along the diagonal. So I'm going to rewrite this matrix with ones along the diagonal and then the corresponding values there. And so now, now this is in the form of our L matrix. So we have our U, our L, and this is our matrix P. Okay. All right. So now that we've found our three matrices, let's confirm that we have that just checking to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes that LU equals PA. Okay, so we wanna make sure that that equality still holds. Uh, that's a good check just to do real quick um, with our giving matrices. Okay, so our L uh, we saw was one, zero, zero, two, one, zero, one, zero, one. Okay, we're gonna multiply that by our U, which was two, zero, negative one, zero, one, or zero, zero, negative one. I want to check to see if that's equal to P, which we saw was zero, one, or one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero. So it's like the identity matrix just with the two rows and are switched. And then our A was, our original one was two, one, negative one, two, one, negative two, and four, three, negative, or no positive two. Okay. So uh, you'll notice that um, a lot of these um, problems have uh, a lot of zeros everywhere, which does make the competition uh, really nice. So um, this is not 11. That looks like 11. That's a 1. OK, and so if we multiply, we're going to multiply this uh, row times this column. So 2, 0, and 0. So that would be 2. This row times this column, it would be 0. Zero, zero. And then this row times this column is uh, negative one. Zero, zero, so negative one. Okay. Uh, this row times this column is four, zero, zero. And this is zero, one, and zero, zero, one, zero. Okay. And then here uh, we have negative two plus four. Negative two plus four is two. Negative two plus four, and then times zero. Okay. And then here we have uh, for this element we have two zero zero. This is two. Uh, 
this row times this column is zero, zero, zero. And then this one we have negative one, zero, negative one. So this is negative two. Okay, so let's check to see if that's equal to this one. Here we have two times one, zero, zero. So that's two. That's looking good. Okay. Then uh, one, one, zero, zero. So uh, going back, I made a mistake here. Uh, my u, I have a two, zero, negative one, but my I'm missing an element here. So this should actually be a one. So you can out where you put your, so just be careful. That's why we could do these checks. So this should be a one here, and this should be a one here. So that's going to affect our multiplication, our product here, uh, since this term is one. So we're going to have to re-evaluate this product here. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and redo that again. So we have uh, two times one. So it's this row times this column. So two, zero, zero. So that's still going to be the same. And then this row times this column would be one, zero, zero, plus one. And then this row times this column. So uh, one, sorry, uh, negative one, zero, zero. So this is going to be a negative one. Okay. And then we look at this row times this column. That's going to be four. Zero, zero, so that's four. This row times this column is two uh, and one, so we're going to add those together to make three and zero. And then here we have two, negative two, four, and zero, so that's going to be uh, negative two plus four, so that's going to be a positive two. Okay, and then here uh, we have two, zero, and zero, so that's going to be a two. This is one. Zero, zero, so that's a one. And then we have negative one, zero, negative one. So it's going to make that a negative two. Okay. All right. So now let's check over here. And we have uh, this row times this column. So just two. The only element there. So that's matching up. That looks good. And this is where we caught the mistake last time. So let's see how we're doing now. Uh, this row times this column. So we have one, zero, zero. So that's one. And then this row times this column, we have negative one, zero, zero. Okay, so that row matches. That's a good sign. This row times this column, we have zero, zero, four. That looks good. This one, we have zero, zero, three. That looks good. And then we have zero, zero, one times two. So that's two. That looks good. And then last but not least, we have zero, two, zero, so two, we have zero, one, zero, so that's uh, one, and then we have zero, negative two, zero, so negative two. Then we notice that those two work out to be exactly the same, which is what we were expecting to see in the first place. Okay, all right, so now that we know that we have the right LUPA, L-U-P-A, right, the L-U decomposition of uh, the matrix A, uh, let's go ahead and use this to solve our, our system. We're actually going to use it to compute the value of the, uh, of the system. Let me solve the system. So uh, normally we have uh, this. We start off with the system AX equals B. Okay, so this is just a little um, little note, a little thing to pay attention to. So this is what we're doing and why we're doing this. So normally, um, this system can be very difficult to solve. Uh, if it gets really complicated with the coefficients or if there's other issues like that. So um, what if we multiply both sides by the by a matrix P, which happens to be a permutation matrix? So if we multiply on the left by P, A, X, and P, B, okay? We're multiplying both of these terms by uh, on, the, on the left by P. If they're equal, then it should be equal. And then using the associative property, okay, we can regroup these, if you will. And so we can actually write this as uh, PA x equals PB. Okay. Now, this part right here, that's the equivalent to what we were looking for up here. 
and why we multiplied in the first place. Okay, so we'll multiply by both sides by p. So this p a is actually equal to these two, the product of these two triangular matrices, the lower and upper triangular matrices. Okay, so we can actually call this then l u x is equal to p b. Okay, and then using the associativity property one more time, I can associate these two together first, and this is the general uh, purpose of doing this is that then I can create a substitution that will make my uh, solution a little bit easier to find. So I'm going to let y equal this u times x. Okay. And then that system, this resulting system, when I plug in y for LU or for ux, okay, this becomes L times y equals PB. Okay. And this system uh, using uh, back substitution okay, is a lot easier to solve. It's a lot easier. To solve. So let's go ahead and compute that uh, specifically for, for this function. And then once we solve this, okay, then we can actually go back and solve this. So once we solve this, we solve this. This is kind of the scheme or the idea. Then we're going to go back and back solve into this. Okay. And that'll that'll be our final final result for our vector x that we're looking for, our solution vector. Okay, so that's the scheme. It's kind of like a kind of like a map uh, around the more difficult problem. We're gonna step over here and solve an easier problem, and then use it to solve another easier problem. So we do two easy problems to accomplish solving the really hard problem. That's the general technique for this particular um, scheme. And you see this everywhere in uh, mathematics, especially if you've done a lot of other kinds of math. Okay, all right. So let's look at our problem. We have uh, L Y. Let's let's solve this system right here. So we have L Y. L was uh, one zero zero two one zero. Oh, that should be a one zero one. And then we have Y one, Y two, Y three, and that was equal to uh, P times B. Remember, P is a permutation matrix, so that was uh, one zero 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 one zero one zero times b. b was, going back to our original uh, problem, was 1, negative 2, 16. So this is p here, and this is b. Okay. This is just a little of side work. Okay. Um, and notice that you'll get back, everything is exactly the same, except for these two rows ended up switching. So this is going to be 1, 16, and negative 2. So that's the PB part. And now I'm going to solve for each of these Y's. Now you'll notice that Y1 is already solved for. So look, Y1 is actually equal to 1. So we've already solved that. And then we can just back substitute uh, from the top down, basically. So you know that you have 2Y1 plus Y2, and that's equal to 16. But Y1 was 1, so this is just 2Y plus Y2 equals 16. This is going to imply that uh, we have 2 plus y2 is equal to 16. So subtracting 2 from both sides, we get y2 is equal to 14. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we have those two. Okay. And likewise, uh, this we have here, we have y1 plus y3 is equal to a negative 2. But we know y1 is 1. Okay. So this implies that 1 plus y3 is equal to negative 2 solving for y2, or y3 in this case, sorry, is uh, y3 is equal to a negative 3. So our y solution vector is, I'm going to write it on the right-hand side here, is going to be y1 was 1, y2 was 14, and y3 was negative 3. Okay, this is our y vector, and now we're going to go back up, and we're going to look at this equation here. Okay, so u times x, and x is what we're trying to solve for, is equal to y. y is this, okay? So uh, u, our, our upper uh, triangular matrix, was uh, 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 4, 0, 0, negative 1, times x1, x2, and x3 equals this. And now look, now I'm going to solve from the bottom up, basically, and I have x1 already, so I have negative x, x3, no, x1, sorry, x3 is equal to negative 3. So 
x3 is equal to a positive 3. And then if I plug that back in into this equation, I have, let me see if I can squeeze a little bit more room here. Um, I have x2 plus x3 is equal to 14. But x3 was equal to 3, so this is x2 plus uh, 3 equals 14. Uh, sorry, equals, there should be a 3 here, a 4 here. I'm missing the 4 in there. Uh, so this should be a total of 12, because 4 times 3 is 12. And so, I'm sorry, that didn't look right. I was talking about that. Uh, this is a 4. Uh, so 4 times 3 gives me the 12 here. So x2, then, if I subtract both sides, 12 on both sides gives me that x2 is going to equal 2. Okay? So x2, we have x3, and now we can use both of those in here to figure out what x1 uh, is. So looks like I'm running out of so right up here. So 2 times x1 plus x2 uh, minus x3 is equal to 1. Okay, plugging in, we have 2 times x1 plus x2 was, so we saw 2, and x3 we saw was 3, minus 3 is equal to 1. Okay, so it looks like we have a negative 1 here, so 2x1 minus 1 is equal to 1. So if I add 1 over, it's going to give me a plus 2, and then if I divide both sides by the 2 here, I'm going to get x1 is equal to 1. Okay. So our x vector then is going to equal 1, 2, 3, or x1, x2, and x3. So you can see how the uh, the process of creating two submatrices, the two upper and lower triangular matrices, uh, creates a little bit more work in terms of generating the, um, the matrices. So once you have the upper and lower triangular matrices, the solutions are a lot easier to find. In fact, you can pretty easily solve them by hand, assuming you don't make it. All right, so we're going to um, explore this a little bit more in uh, GeoGebra. So I'm going to write the A matrix as uh, 2, 1, negative 1, oops, negative 1. And then I have uh, 2, 1, negative 2. And of course, we have uh, 4, 3, and 2. Okay. So there's our matrix A. And then uh, this is in the, so if you come over here to the, um, the little like hamburger looking thing um, and change the view. I have both the alpha and the CAS or computer alpha system uh, views in GeoGebra. So GeoGebra, uh, the algebra view is good for inputting things and storing things as variables, uh, but some functions can only be accessed through the computer alpha system. And so um, for us, the LU decomposition method only works in this. So I'm going to plug in the matrix A here. And you have the ELU decomposition. Plugging that in and typing, hitting enter, you'll see that it spits out uh, the three matrices. So here's our permutation matrix P, which is what we expected to see. Our uh, matrix uh, our L, our lower our L matrix, sorry. Uh, that's our L matrix. And then our upper matrix um, U. So this was the O matrix that became the lower matrix C, e, and the, this is the upper matrix A, closer matrix that became the U matrix. And so you can see our P, our uh, L, and our U matrices uh, were spit out in play. Um, well, so here we go. Um, here is our decompositions. And so uh, we can create the vector B uh, just to see if it, if it works. Um, so to make it a column of um, three, you need to kind of set it up weird, right? But each of these gets its own individual thing. There we go. Okay. And so you could uh, conceivably imagine um, writing, if you define L as that matrix there, one, zero, zero, one, um, two, one, and zero. And uh, one, zero, one. Okay, so there's L and there's U. Oops, U is two, one, and negative one. What do we have? Zero, one, and four. 
And I think this may have been easier to do first before I did it by hand, um, but you learn in, in the K in our permutation matrix is uh, one, zero, zero. Let's see, zero, zero, one, and zero, one, and zero. Okay, so there's our P. All right, so theoretically, uh, we should get um, that this works out to be exactly the same. So L times U should give us, if we subtract it from P times A, we should expect to get zeros. And you can see, in fact, we do. So that verifies that those are equivalent. Okay. Um, so we can kind of check to see a couple of different things. So um, if we wanted to, so uh, minus P A. And so that does that loop that does work out. Zeros uh, is what we would expect if they're equal. If they're non-zero, then they're not equal, and that would be a trouble. Okay. Um, what else are we going to do? Check to see the multiplication. Uh, so in the algebra view, uh, you can carry out uh, matrix multiplication and stuff like that, as well as in the, the uh, computer algebra system view. And the problem is, is that uh, it doesn't always um, like you have to. You can't access the OUD composition in the um, algebra view. You have to be in the computer algebra system view. Okay, uh, so we can check our solution. We can even multiply A inverse times B, and uh, that's what we got. So that's uh, that's helpful to know. Um, that's just finding the A inverse. And for the system, uh, that, that's not too difficult, but imagine the system was really difficult. That would be hard to do. Uh, we also saw that, um, uh, what do we multiply by? We multiply by, um, We let y equal ux and we multiply it. So, uh, so let's do p times b. And that's our, that was our thing. So we had, uh, we had l times, uh, actually, we can say l inverse times p times b. And that should look very familiar. So that would be our y matrix. And so if we do, uh, u times m4, this is the corresponding y matrix. Um, I'm sorry, no, I meant uh, u inverse times times m4, m4. You would see that we get the exact same uh, result because we're solving for the inverse. So delete that just for the room. But you see that this is exactly the same thing as solving the system so uh, that we did class. So it checks out both ways, um, which is really nice. So I hope that was helpful. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.